Coming up on today's episode of Real Talk Rentals, what's in the future for property management? We're going to tell you all about it. Welcome back to Real Talk Rentals, a podcast brought to you by OnQ Property Management. We're here to give you the behind the scenes scoop on owning a residential rental and everything that goes into the property management system. I'm Ben. I'll be your host with me as always, Mr. Eric Dixon, the uh, go-to expert on all things rental and real estate here in Arizona and beyond. And today I thought uh, we're going to look into our crystal ball a little and talk about the future of property management. Um, things that are coming down the pipeline for tenants and lord landlords that everybody needs to know. So let's kick it off then. And Eric, let's talk about how are things changing for landlords, people that own residential rentals, what's coming down the pipe for them, especially when we talk about rules and regulations? Uh, rule, rules and regulations. It's a great question because there's a lot changing. I mean, this is just, I just know Arizona and then parts of Texas right now that, uh, it seems like it's ever evolving and changing. I would say mostly around federal and then it gets down to state and then city and county fair housing laws and, you know, tenant landlord laws. And so, um, I'd say, you know, if you're a self manager or whether you have a property management company, you should be well versed in that. I mean, you got to yeah. know that, um, and it's not always a bad thing. It's just, there is going to be change. Um, yeah. you know, there, there is, there are movements and legislature and, and bills and stuff passing to kind of be more tenant or resident sided, but some of those things it's to make it more fair and that's okay. That's good. It's just, you have to know how to, you know, work within the confines of those rules. Um, another one that we're dealing with here in Arizona is city by city. There's the housing voucher programs. So like section eight or, or the like every city is a little different. So it's like somebody calls us on the phone. Hey, I'm interested in this property. Do they take section eight or do they take, you know, this housing program? And we have to look at the address and you can determine not only can we do it, but are they, uh, do they play by a different set of rules? You know, yeah. because, because different cities pass different things. And then, then our, our attorneys who kind of keep us well-versed on this stuff, they're like, oh, by the way, this city, it's coming down the pipe. Hey, this one's coming down. And so we're like, you know. It, I was so surprised to find out that fair housing, like the federal fair housing is like the minimum. Yeah. Right. No, and then the cities minimum. can build upon that. Like oh, yeah. literally just driving over a city line and you could have a whole new set of rules. Oh yeah. I, I, I joke with, uh, I was joking with the leasing, leasing guys. Like I drive to work, you know, from Mesa. Once I get in Gilbert, it's different, different rules over here. There's yeah. more, there's more local fair housing protections in Mesa than there are in Gilbert. <laughs> it's crazy. And so and like I said, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's it's frustrating because it's like, hey, just because you're half a mile over this line, sure. like those things you're held accountable for, but but you're not on this side. Um, but w it is what it is. You know, yeah. it, I think a lot of it is it, it will shake out and be fair and fine. It's just getting through the minutia of it. Um, another big one we're dealing with right now because there's such a saturation of it is Airbnbs or vacation rentals. Yeah. And we live change. in huge changes and, you know, our previous governor kind of laid down the law that you HOAs can't shut down Airbnbs and now HOAs are finding, you know, their way around it is, oh yeah, you can do Airbnb. You just have to do a 30 day minimum or you have to do this, that, and the yeah. other. And it's like, wait, you can, can do an Airbnb, but you need a 12 month lease. Yeah. And <laughs> but, they, but they have to be willing to sign up 12 months with Airbnb. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Airbnbs, it's a big one because a lot of, especially during the pandemic and stuff years ago, you know, everyone jumped in and, and bought these Airbnbs, they're renting them. And now the HOAs are kind of just getting them out and they're, you could put your foot down and fight it, but it's like, seriously, I'm, I'm not up to fight this right now. Yeah. And so we're seeing a lot of those convert to long-term rentals. What does that mean for the long-term rentals? It means there's saturation in the long-term now. Like yeah. there, there's an abundance of rentals on the market right now as we're talking because these vacation rentals are transitioning back to long-term or there's uh, those landlords, they would love to sell, but they're like, I don't want to sell because interest rates are so high. I'm locked in this low rate. It's just, you know, those things are that we're working through. Um, what are the other ones? Uh, so, so one that we do that we we do heavily, but uh, everyone's kind of catching on to is secure alternatives to a security deposit. Yeah, so, this was huge in California. Now it's huge here, yeah. and it seems like it's kind of going everywhere now. And I, I didn't realize it's always been a thing in apartments. Like, yeah. apart, you know, you'll see like five hundred dollar move in special. You're like that, whatever. That's bogus. 
And it's like, no, they have alternative solutions to a security deposit where you don't need to fork up two, three grand. You could just pay a monthly fee or you could pay a fee in lieu of the deposit or you can right. get a co-signer that will help you not you know, do different things. So um, I do think even what we do is just like one step in that realm. And yeah. it's like over time, I think everybody's going to have to get used to kind of molding and, and working with people with inflation and rental rates going crazy and house prices going crazy. Yeah. People don't have the 10 grand to move. Yeah. You, know, you see some of these contracts and it's like, yeah, 10 grand to move into a new house that yeah. they're renting. And it's like, and, and it's kind of like, Hey, for 10 or 15, you could buy a house, not to say you should always buy instead of rent, but it's yeah. like, it used to be, Hey, if you buy, you got a down payment, you got to get in there. Yeah. If you rent, you can kind of, you know, just pay a deposit and move in. Now it's like, no, it's first month fees. It's a uh, deposit. You're also carrying the deposit deposit from your previous landlord. Yeah. So you're like, you add all that, then moving costs, utility deposits on all your accounts, uh, you know, transfer fees, cancellation. If you left early, you know, it's like, dude, it might cost you 10, 15 grand to move into a $2,000 a month rental. Yeah. And so it's just because of those things, we need to be cognizant. Landlords need to be cognizant of, of those uh, cash costs. And then uh, I would say the last thing is just, you know, we went through a horrible time, you know, in the world with the pandemic and COVID and stuff, but we have to realize that something like that, you know, heaven forbid it's that bad again, but it's like something like that, right? Local lockdowns uh, could be disease. It could be polluted pollution. It could be whatever. And yeah. it locks people in. And property management and landlords have to figure out what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah, I, I I think uh, if we took anything from COVID, it's hopefully you know like we're prepared. We may not know what the next big thing's going to happen, but like be prepared for something. Yeah, coming down the line that we have to because it did change the way we do everything. Yeah, no, and you look back and it's a lot of the really cool initiatives that we went after were because of COVID. Yeah. It was like, it was because we couldn't have walk-in traffic. Like, Hey, how are we going to do this? And we implemented it. Right. And so some of it, those are the, the techno technological advances, you know, are, are awesome because yeah. of it, but we have to utilize that now. And that's the new standard. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Hey, COVID changed it to this. Now that's just, that's what's expected. Yeah. And so then, you know, being prepared for something else. Um, so you mentioned security deposit alternatives, which obviously affect landlords, but they also really affect residents and renters. And that's what I, I kind of want to talk about that now, where what sort of changes are coming from them? I know there's been big changes in like Zillow and the way they operate and like things like that for people who rent properties. Yeah. So yeah, we talked about the landlord and PM side, the, t the tenant side. I mean, it's, there's not a ton of like fantastic news that pops in my head, right? A sure. lot of it is like, look, historically, rents are going up. That's not a positive. No, nah, not you great. Know, not great, right? <laughs> but but it's like, hey, just look at historically. Yeah, there's dips and stuff, but it's like, dude, rents are going up. So how do you prepare for that? Make decisions today based on the fact, most likely the fact that, you know, rents are going to go up, right? right. With, just with inflation alone, rents will creep up. But then it's that compounded on, I I, uh, I wrote down this quote or copied and pasted it in here because it is so telling of what the future is, right? So this is from CNBC, but it says institutional investors. So those are like the invitation homes, the BlackRock, the big, even, even an investor that has 50 or 100 homes or a group sure. or whatever, right? Institutional investors may control 40% of all US single family rental homes by 2030. And like, I don't know, a decade ago, I'm like, dude, 2030, like I'm going to be a grandpa. Like, whatever. yeah. And now I'm like, wait, 2030 is in seven years. Yeah. And your like, kid will be in high school. <laughs> yeah. Our, my kids will be in high school. And uh, it, it's just like, that's reality. And those yeah. are our kids are going to be in a market where, you know, these big conglomerate companies are going to own over almost half of the residential rentals. Yeah. So whatever they do, they can kind of turn the needle in either either yeah. direction. So you're already seeing less and less of the, you know, just finding a one person who runs their own, you oh, know, yeah. property and says, ah, oh, you know, come on in, I'll rent it to you guy off the street. Yeah. You know, no, like, and I, I get texts all the time because people know, Hey, I'm a, a broker and on queue and everything else. And they're like, Hey, do you have a rental three bedroom, two bath Mesa? And I'm like, you know, my personal ones are rented. So I just send them to our website and yeah. same old, same, I got to treat everybody the same, send them to the site, tell them we'd love to help them. Right. And they're like, oh no, I'm kind of looking for a direct to landlord. It's impossible. Yeah. And I'm like, 
well, there's reasons. I mean, self-managing a direct landlord is getting, getting harder and harder as the landlord. Yeah. A lot of that demographic that did that is aging out, right? They're yeah. selling, they're passing away, they're passing it on to their kids and their kids hire a property manager. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it's kind of like everything is kind of changing. So as, as a resident, as a future tenant, uh, you know, applying on properties, just realize that it's going to be the case that it's not the government, but it's these huge companies that the big stock market tickers, they own a ton of the rentals in your neighborhood. Yeah. Right? And it's only going to get, get more and more. Um, the other thing I, I wrote down here was, and this kind of goes back to the grim fact that, uh, that rents are going up, but just since January, 2020 to January, 2023. So that three year time period, single, Two bed detached homes increased nationally twenty four percent. The you rental know, rate. The rental rate. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, the rental rate. Not not the sales price. It went even higher than that. But yeah, just the rental rate went up twenty four percent across the nation, and then isolated in Phoenix went up forty three percent. That's insane. <laughs> so it's like it almost doubled in the last three three and a half years. Right? Yeah. And so you know, hopefully it doesn't stay on that trajectory. But as a as somebody renting, you need to realize like, hey, the reality is. We're going to have to figure out a way to either make more money to get this house or yeah. we're going to downsize or we need to buy something where I can get a fixed cost for owning this thing. So. Yeah. Um, and uh, I briefly touched on it there, but I also don't want to skip over talking about Zillow um, for tenants. When you talk about these increased rates and stuff like that, one thing that's rolled out recently, but you'll probably see changing oh, yeah. other places is that they are posting the entire cost of a property now in the uh cost of the rental where before it'd be like hey this is 2400 but it doesn't include you know the fees that are associated yep. or you know and including fees like there might be fees to the property manager but there could be like a you know some apartments have like a ten dollar trash collection fee per resident yep. or whatever things like that so now you're going to be when you log into zillow and look at those homes you're going to see that price of cumulative price of everything yeah. instead of just the one. And and some people were fighting back, but I kind of on that side where it's just like ultimate transparency is great. Yeah. It's like, you should know when looking at it, don't get super excited. If you're like, Oh, it says 2000 a month, but it actually is 2,800 because yeah. of the clubhouse or the golf car, whatever yeah. it is. Right. There's all these add-ons. And so it's really just full transparency. It yeah. It, and it, it, I think it's better because it, waste everyone's time less like yeah. you know you don't have a tenant applying for a home that was like well i didn't realize there was an extra 150 bucks on here yep you don't have a leasing agent wasting their time going through approvals and stuff yep. and the person's like actually i'm not interested at that price yeah so it benefits everybody to just yeah be up front yeah. share yep. all the prices and, let them know and i i love it and zillow's not the only one doing it you know a lot yeah. of people are kind of moving in that direction which is great yeah all right so when we talk about that sort of stuff. Um, let's talk about how, uh, I kind of jumped questions here. I see, but when, um, how do you think for a residential property management company? And obviously we, that's what we do. And we don't talk about, uh, commercial here and that's a whole different ball yeah. game of changes and stuff. But, um, what do you think is changing when it comes to that? Like what we do, how is that benefiting tenant to rent from us and not from just a landlord. Yeah. Well, then it kind of just piggybacking off what you, what you said, even with the Zillow thing, right? That change came to pass because people demanded the change, right? And they, they, yeah. didn't, they don't have picket signs saying like, Hey, Zillow put the fees on their website, but it was like people now in, in the 20, what are we? 21st century. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like the 22nd. Century. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, 21st. In the 21st century, people need stuff now. They need it fast. They don't want to be, you don't want to be screwed over. You want, yeah. to, you want to be told what, what is the truth and what, what can I deal with here? So what I think is over time, especially in our industry, residents, tenants, they um, demand a higher level of service than they ever have. And yeah. I think it's fair. It's like, hey, if the property management company is going to charge you an application fee, hey, the, you know, they demand communication. They demand yeah. a quick response. They demand a, a a lease that's legit. It's not handwritten and sent by snail mail. It's no, it's DocuSign or it's a it's a digital signature program. It's I can sign it on my phone. I can apply on my phone. Yeah, I can I can text. I don't need to call. You know, people demand different things, and I feel like we, we've done a really good job, kind of 
going through that and the user experience or the tenant experience needs to be better. And they demand it's a higher level, a higher, uh, a higher bar, you know, it's been raised. Um, and then, but also through all, all, all of that, making sure would they have somebody available to talk to. So I yeah. feel like there, I don't know how many, I don't even know what the number is, but how many people rent from us that they prefer not to talk on the phone. Everything's yeah. by a text, by an email, by a work order request online. They go to our locker system that we have outside to pick up and drop off stuff and you don't have to talk to anybody. Yeah. A lot of people prefer that. We don't have it there because we don't want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, that's what the world is demanding is, dude, I have so much going on. The last thing I want to do is call my property management company. Right. Oh my gosh. I could text them. I could go at two in the morning to pick up my keys. Yeah. No one has to be there. Like those are the type of things that now that that bar is raised, that's the new standard. And then if they go rent from somebody else, they're like, wait, you don't have somebody on call 24 seven. You don't have a locker system. You don't have a, yeah. you don't have digital signatures on your leases. I'm meeting you in person. Like, Oh, that sounds horrible. You know, like that, that's kind of how, how it's going to work. So yeah, for us, like that's, we're trying to improve that in experience. Um, I wrote down just the cool things that we've changed over the last, and this is not a, a podcast just about on cue, but just to give people an idea, like the application process we've, improved so much to where approvals are same day unless there's an outlier, right? And it's yeah. because of the technology we have with linking bank accounts and pay stub uploads and AI that reads and, and determines stuff with before we even run the application, we already have all this data scraped, right? Yeah. Um, the lease signing is all digital. You We're not printing any paper. Uh, the key pickup I mentioned is the coolest thing that came out of COVID as far as technology for property management, I think, is these locker systems where we can drop off and um, pick up keys like the Amazon lockers at circle K, <laughs> Yeah, you know, that type of thing where we have it here for our, for our, uh, for our, our residents, the work orders are all online. Um, they text one of the technicians on the way to the property. They'll text how the, how they were. And if there's a review that you want to leave the before and after pictures, the yeah. movie, you know, all that stuff. And none of that involves talking to somebody. Yeah. And we want, we are available to talk, but it's like, I, I swear like 75% of people don't want to talk. They're yeah. like, dude, send me a text, like do yeah. this. So we're proactively answering the phone. We get it going. And once it's, once you're to a path, it's just automated and it's great. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I want to put an emphasis on that. And I think you said it well, there is that there's that expectation of, of that's the better word, dude, service. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. I'm like talking about like the bar raised, the, whatever. Yeah. And it's like, their expectations are, are, are higher. And, and, and I think as a society, we expect now, whether we talk to a person or not, that that level of service is the same, you know, yeah. whether someone's sitting in front of me telling me these things, or I can just read them online and have it yeah. dictated to me. They want that same experience where it used to be like, well, you're going to do it yourself on your phone and look this stuff up. It's going to be a lot harder, you know? Yeah. And now there's that expectation, um, and COVID certainly, you know, I, I think things were going that way anyway, yeah. but it, it certainly fa fast tracked. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. Sure. It, it made it so that everybody um, in property management and just about every industry demands that level of service be across the board. Yeah. And it, you all, you, we all have those times, whether it's uh, your pool guy or your plumber that came to your house, a service industry related thing, or your, your waiter or waitre waitress at the restaurant. And you're just like, dude, that was slick. That was awesome. And yeah. usually it has to do with somehow technology was used to remember uh, restaurants went to like uh, paperless menus and you just scan a QR code. Yeah. And I'm just like, sometimes I'm like, dude, this is dumb, whatever. But then it's like, oh, scan, order, done. And I'm like, did I just order dinner? Yeah. <laughs> dude, that was awesome. Like, yeah. Or whatever. And it's it's just like, oh, now now the bar is raised. Yeah. Now when I go to a restaurant and the, the menu is all sticky from the last 15 people, it's all... Yeah. I'm like, okay, this place sucks. Like, so I think this so anyway. the episode should be titled, Did I Just Order Dinner? Yeah. Uh, this, <laughs> this one. Yeah, did I just order dinner? Like, yeah. I, I paid for it. It's going to be here in 10 minutes and no one has come and talked to us. This yeah. is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know? All right. So lastly, obviously we're biased because, you know, this is what we do all day, but, um, what do you think it's going to look like in the future for a property management company? Why is it essential for people to sign? We've mentioned all these changing things and happening, but why do you think it's in a landlord and a tenant's best interest to work with a property management company? Yeah. So 
I, I think at the end of the day, it's, you know, 20, 30 years ago before I was in the industry uh, and I didn't have experience, but I, I talked to people that some that work for us have been doing it for 20, 30 years. Yeah. And they're like, look, property management, it's simple on paper. You know, you're collecting the rent, you're managing maintenance and you do the financials, you know, and it's yeah. like, you just do that and you're fine. That was fine 30, 20, 10 years ago. Not even 10, it was, it was changing. Now it's like, it's all of that plus service. And I think that's why self-managers are like, I can do the collect rent. I can do the handled maintenance. I can do the, keep track of the financials, but I'm not a service person. Like I don't like talking to people. I don't want to meet face to face. I don't want them to interrupt my family time. And it's that high level of service. If you can't offer that as a self-manager, then you go to a property management company Yeah, and those management companies better know how to offer good service. Yeah, And so that's the difference. It's the, all the add-ons and the nuts and bolts are cool and they're sexy, but at the end of the day, it's picking up the phone, it's solving their problems. It's being very, very fast and getting it done. Or, you know, they're just going to compare it to the, the experience they had at the restaurant the night before. They're like, dude, you tell me this restaurant can do this and you guys can't even fix a leak in my toilet. Like, yeah. Seriously. Like, you know, and, and I pay you $2,500 a month to live here and you can't even answer my email. You know, right. Like there's, there's a level of service. I think you, we talked about yesterday, the word entitlement is an, has a negative connotation, but I think you spin it positively and it's like, yes, the tenants are entitled to great service because they pay a lot. For yeah, it. They're paying like, a lot of money to live there. They're paying a lot to live there. And in some sense, like entitlement, I think is, uh, is a great, tenants should be entitled to certain things, not just peaceful enjoyment in their home, but they should be entitled to good service to their landlord or their property manager. So I think over time, that's just going to be exploited more and yeah. more and more. And, you know, the, these big institutional buyers that own 80,000 houses, they're not offering great service because they're not boots on the ground. They're not local and they're not, you know, these local PM property management companies that can do that. So I think that's going to be the differentiator. It's like, I'm going to rent from the huge big guy, or I'm going to rent from a local property manager that knows the local laws. They know the local restaurants. They know the local, you know, people. Yeah. And I think that that's the way that it's going to go. Yeah. All right. Well, I think those are all the predictions we can make today. Um, and How's that for crystal ball? That was good. That was good. Uh, <laughs> did you? Did I just order dinner? I'm going to make sure that says that. Um, all right. That's it for us this time. Be sure to uh, subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening and leave us a five-star review if you can. It really helps out. And we will see you guys next time. Bye.